Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to look back at my 2023 goals video and see how well I did. So once again, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you decided to click on this video today. Like I said, today I'm gonna watch my 2023 goals for booktube and reading video that I made and posted 10 months ago and kind of see how well I did. I can already tell you, probably not great, but we're gonna see. I thought this would just be like something kind of fun. I've seen other people do it and yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's been quite a year, you know, I've, I've kind of, I'm just gonna come right out with it. In general, in my personal life, 2023 has been the worst year of my life so far. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're new to my channel, my dad has, stage four pancreatic cancer and uh, he got his diagnosis in May. He's still here, so that's pretty amazing that he's been able to stick around this long because it's pretty a pretty tough diagnosis. But so all that to say is it's just, it's been rough. I've been uh, had some ups and downs and here we are. So all that, let's just go ahead and watch this video. I'm gonna go ahead and skip through like the beginning to get to my actual like goals and all of that because it's boring. <laughs> my first goal for YouTube is I would like to hit 500 subscribers. So my first goal I hit, my goal was to hit 500 subscribers and I did it. I'm currently sitting at 570. I would love to get that up even more before the end of the year, but that was my goal and I'm so happy I made it. I'm so grateful to all of you for watching my videos and subscribing. I still have so much fun doing these videos. They've been one of the highlights of my day-to-day -day life the past year. They've really helped me get through stuff, so I'm so grateful. And I don't know what my goal will be for next year yet, but hopefully, you know, just keep growing. So check on that one we did it maybe a thousand if i could possibly be oh, well. that lucky i am currently sitting at around 160 which seems like a long way to go to a thousand and it is i'm certainly not discounting that but if youtube is anything like instagram where i have somehow managed to get over 16,000 people to follow me once you get to a certain point, it just kind of happens very organically as more people are seeing your stuff and sharing it. Well, that has not been the case for me so far. <laughs> I feel like I have worked hard for all of the subscribers that I have, but that's fine. I'm here to I'm here to do the work. But it's funny that I said that because I'm like I feel like my Instagram presence has just kind of taken a back seat and I've barely grown on Instagram since I guess last year <laughs> and liking it and whatnot, you know, it's much faster to grow once you've gotten to a certain point. So if that's the same, I do think that 1000 is, is feasible for this year. But again, I'm just happy to be here. So that is definitely a goal, but if we can't make it, I don't think I'll be too upset. However, I would really like to hit 500. This leads me to my next goal, which is to post consistently at least once a week. Well, I definitely didn't post once a week. I had some big gaps in there, but I think I did post a lot more consistently throughout the year than I did in the previous like six months of last year that I had been on booktube. I should count out how many videos I made and how frequently I posted them. Okay, so I actually posted 63 videos this year which is way more than I thought. So, I mean, I might not have posted every single week, but that averages to more than once a week. So that's pretty cool. I didn't realize that I had been so active on here and really happy with that, with that number. I've been kind of making them up as I go. When something comes to me, I just then film a video as opposed to trying to sit down and think of good ideas. And I would like to be a little more intentional about that. I would like to be posting regularly on certain days of the week. For now, at this point, I'm just kind of posting when I have content to post. Well, I tried that for a little bit, but it was just a lot of energy. So now I just kind of post when I have a video to post, but I do think I have more ideas, 
more frequently and I've been trying to batch film a little bit which is definitely helpful on posting more consistently and I would again I would like to change that to be a little more regular a little more predictable so that people who watch my videos will always know what to expect and when to expect it my third goal is one that you may be sitting there shaking your head yes Laura please make this your goal which is to make a better effort at scripting and editing and just generally getting better at that. Well, it's certainly not a goal that I can exactly measure. I'm hoping that it will just be something that I continue to improve well, on. Well, I do think my editing has gotten somewhat better. Uh, my scripting still is terrible. I still have to do a ton of editing because I am just talking nonsense. I lose my train of thought. I look at my cats and then I just start petting them and fully exit from the conversation. Uh, so that could definitely still be improved, but I feel like at this point, I kind of have a system. I know how I, know how I speak, I know my patterns, so I know how editing is gonna go. And I think that really helps, I guess, just knowing myself and what I'm gonna need on the back end of everything, yeah. Because I just don't think I'm ever going to be somebody that wants to sit down and script what I am saying because I don't think I can be natural with it. <laughs> I don't think I can read a script without being like, and this, and this, and this. It's just not who I am. A lot of times I'm just here talking out of my ass and not really planning what I'm going to say before it comes out of my mouth. Still do that constantly, which in addition to not being like the best way to make a video, also requires a lot more editing than it would if I would just take the time to plan out what I'm gonna say a little bit better. Maybe that's the ticket. I've just gotten better at editing, so it doesn't take me as long to edit my nonsense. So I think that is definitely one that will be hard to measure, but easy to see when the results happen. I've definitely checked out different videos with scripting and exactly the words I want to say versus bullet points. And I personally enjoy YouTube videos better when someone is naturally just talking. So while I don't want to continue acting the way I did before, or I have been where I'm just kind of talking and making it up as I go, I would like it to continue to be a natural kind of conversation with myself on camera where, you know, it's not it's not fully scripted. I'm not reading off of a page. This booktube goal is one that's like maybe a little embarrassing to mention given that I've been on booktube almost six months by now. Uh, but I would like to make more booktube friends. Okay, so I've definitely made more booktube friends. I am so excited about the friends that I've made. Leandra the TBR Zero, Michaela Reads, all I do is read, Melinda, Web of Stories. There are absolutely a bunch that I can't think of at this moment, but like I've definitely started to form relationships a lot more than I had in the past. So I am pretty happy with that. I just need to do more of it. Over on Instagram, I talk to tons of people every single day. I have a whole bunch of friends that I have met several times in real life. I went on vacation with some back in October. I have a group of flight attendant bookstagrammer friends that I've I've talked to like every day for the past three almost years and that I've met almost all of them in person at least once. But I haven't had that same experience here on booktube which I don't 100% know how to remedy. I'm not exactly the best at initiating conversations. I'm naturally kind of a reserved and shy person. But the internet is great for that because I can just comment on people's videos and you know, maybe they reply, maybe they don't. But this is how I guess I'm going to attempt to make more friends on booktube because it really is so much about the community that I love about books and like book social media, I guess, is the other people that you meet and that you can interact with. So I would really like to commit to just forging more friendships, being more active in the comments of videos that I watch and trying to really form some relationships here because I think it will help me both make better content, uh, have more fun, and just in generally improve what I'm trying to do here. So my reading goals are pretty lofty, at least one of them, but I think doable at the same time. On to my reading goals. These I honestly have no clue what I said, so I'm a little bit nervous because 
I don't really know if my goals that I had back in January are anything close to what I had like in February. So we'll see. So I would like to read 200 books. So 200 books. I am currently sitting at 187 and today is the 8th of December. So I feel like it's pretty doable. I think I'm going to get to 200. I might even be able to squeeze out a couple past that. I've read some shorter books, I think, recently. I went through the Winter Street series by Ellen Hildebrand, and that I just, I ate up in like two days. I read all four books, so that really helped. And I have more on my, um, on my TBR that are a little bit shorter that I definitely plan to utilize to get to this goal. And yeah, I might even get a little bit past it. This past year, I read 190, which, was, you know, definitely hard. I guess I was always reading at least one to two books at a time. But the number of books that I ended up DNFing was definitely high enough that I probably read like pages wise a total of 200 books. Uh, same this year. I mean, I did the one video about DNFs. I do have another one that I plan on filming about the rest of the books I DNF this year. But Based on like how many pages or hours I spent listening to books that I ended up not finishing, therefore not counting towards my Goodreads goal, it's, I probably read 10 more books at least, <laughs> or at least close to it. One of my goals for 2022 was to DNF books you're not having fun with. There's no reason to keep reading a book if you're not having a good time and enjoying it. So I really made that something to focus on last year and it really worked. I mean, you don't get through 190 books if half of them you hated. So I'm very pleased with that number, but I would really like to get to 200. And this year I am using Storygraph. I didn't stick to that at all. I think I used it for like a month. Like I do, I did the year before too, I'm pretty sure. It's just, I can't keep track on multiple apps and Goodreads is just much more convenient for me for some tracking. So this is gonna help me track not only the books I've finished, but just like pages read. So that some of those books that I did DNF can like kind of count towards like a page goal, which I don't really have, <laughs> but still, still interesting to see come the end of the year, like how much did you actually read, even if you didn't finish all of those books. I would also like to read one nonfiction book a month. I don't know if I did this. I am going to go look right now because it seems like something that could be possible. <laughs> okay, so yeah, in January I read You Just Need to Lose Weight. Let's see. And in February, I didn't read any nonfiction in February. In March, I read Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory. So that's nonfiction. In April, I did not read a nonfiction book, but I think if I'm remembering correctly, I read most of What's Eating Us, Women, Food, and the Epidemic of Body Anxiety in April, but I did not like log it in Goodreads until May because I think I finished it on like the first. So I did not read any, any other nonfiction in May, so that one can just count for one month. In June, I read Swipe Up For More, Inside the Unfiltered Lives of Influencers. In July, I read Hey Hun, Sales, Sisterhood, Supremacy, and the Other Lies Behind Multi-Level Marketing. In August, I did not read any nonfiction. In September, I did not read any nonfiction. In October, I read The Woman and Me by Britney Spears and Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton. So those are both nonfiction. In November, I read Why We Love Baseball, or should I say I finished Why We Love Baseball. Also, Night by Ellie Beidzel, Dolls of Our Lives, and White Women, Everything You Already Know About Your Own Racism and How to Do Better. Also, Page Boy by Elliot Page. And in December, I have not yet read a nonfiction book, but I think I'm going to especially now that I have this goal in mind. So, I mean, maybe I didn't read one every single month, but I think I averaged more than one a month. So I'm going to count it as a success. I'm definitely more of a fiction girl and I personally, I don't, there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with only reading fiction, 
but I like to read to also like educate myself a little and there's definitely topics that are just like cool and interesting to me. I read a lot of books about baseball because I'm a huge fan. Bat activism books really interest me. Uh, so there's definitely stuff out there that I haven't even skimmed the surface of yet and I would really just like to do like one a month and I enjoy memoirs. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this is definitely a doable goal. I am currently with my best friend McKenna reading Les Miserables, which is musical that we both just love, love, love. It's like one of my favorites of all time. And I played young Cosette when I was a little kid. So it's definitely one that holds a special place in my heart. It was one of the first shows I ever saw on Broadway. So we just love it. And we decided this year we were going to read the book. <sighs> well, we did not finish it. I think we both stopped reading this around February. I feel like I could pick it back up and know exactly where I left off because I'm so familiar with the show, but I don't know if I will. Uh, who knows? Who knows? I, we did not finish it, but we... It's still maybe something we could do in the future. It's long. It's 14... Oh, 1500 pages? It's long. And so we've committed to reading 100 pages a week and then kind of doing a little book club with it. She is not much of a reader so this is really exciting to be able to do this together in something that we both think we'll love because we know the story and we love it so it might end up taking us longer than 15 weeks to finish it might take several years but we are committed and we are excited currently we are just about 100 pages in so hopefully i'll have more to update with that soon but yes i am committed to finishing the whole book the next one is going to be one that's not necessarily relatable to everyone, but but I am lucky enough to get lots of books sent to me from publishers, which is seriously the coolest thing ever. And I've been on Bookstagram for almost three years and it's not become any less cool at this point. <laughs> but I need to start requesting books that I know I'm going to read. I think I've definitely gotten better about this. I have whole sheets of books on offer to me that I just don't submit because there's nothing that looks good. So I definitely think that I have gotten better at knowing myself and what I actually will read versus what I'm just like, maybe this looks cool or this is like, this looks like it's going to be popular. I, I should get a copy because what if I want to read it later? Like, no, no, no. Those can go to other people. I need to have books that I feel confident that I'm going to read. I might not still read them all, but like, I need to at least be pretty confident that that's going to happen. Along the same lines of that is being more intentional with my book shopping. I think I've gotten better about this. I think that I can probably count on, on two hands how many books I've actually purchased for myself, or should I say like physical copies that I've purchased for myself this year. I am definitely someone who utilizes the library a lot. I read a lot of the books I get sent for free. And if I'm going to buy a book in person, a physical book, it's generally a used book. There are definitely exceptions when something is pre-ordered that I'm super excited about or my book of the month books. Um, but other than that, like I think I'm pretty good about not buying books, even when I'm traveling. I try to stick to maybe um, books that are used and stuff like that. So. I mean, I guess I can see what exactly my goal was if I just shut up a second and listen, but I feel like I feel like I did pretty well. So I am a flight attendant, so I visit a whole bunch of different bookshops all over the country whenever I can, which stay tuned for my next video coming up, which will cover all of my favorite bookstores in the United States. But I oftentimes go into a bookstore and say I have to buy something here because it's an indie bookstore and I want to support them and yeah I just I got to and that's good I of course support indie bookstores and I'm always in favor of book shopping but the number of books that I have on my shelf that are unread that I really want to read it's too many so I need to be way more intentional with what I'm buying and not just buying it because it's there and it sounds okay. And you know, of course there's gonna be occasions when I see a book that I haven't heard of and it's, oh, it's on sale, oh, this looks good, let's buy it. Of course. And I'm, I mean, that's how we discover new books too. But I don't think I should be buying every single book that I f think might be something I would like that's okay. We need to focus on the ones we own first 
And just because you're not purchasing a book at an indie bookstore does not mean you can't support them. I can take videos and pictures and post them on my social media. I can tell other flight attendants, oh, when you're visiting this city, you should definitely check out this bookstore. You know, there's so many things to do to support without having to spend money, and that's something I would like to focus on. Okay, so that's the video. Uh, I would say overall I did pretty well. A lot, a lot better than I had anticipated, I think, because I really couldn't remember what I did, but I also knew that I didn't do much differently than I did at least regarding like my YouTube stuff from last year so I was like I mm, don't know but I am pretty pleased with how that turned out I will be doing this video again this year with new goals or probably some of the same as well so we will see how that goes if you couldn't tell I did cut out some of the stuff in that video that was not really relevant because we didn't need to just sit here and listen to me talk but nevertheless this was kind of fun to watch. I hope you had fun watching me watch my video. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would. Let me know if you hit your goals for 2023. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.